right, it's time for the next end of the year top 10 video. Um, I already did my first one on Monday and I did a series I want to read in 2022 video. I have both of those already in a playlist that I will link in the cards and down below. And yeah, today we're talking about audiobooks. Specifically, I wanted to put books on this list, even if they're going to show up on other lists that their experience was enhanced because of the audiobook and the narrator. And yeah, that that's what I wanted to do. So I will not only have the book here, but I will also have the narrator listed because I do feel like that was an important part of the experience is that this actor brought this work to life for me. So like in the previous video, I did rank these books and I ranked it both in terms of audio quality and enjoyment of the book. Although like the last video, all of these were at least four star reads, books that I recommend to everyone. And so we're going to start with We Free the Stars by Hafsa Faisal. This is a two person team and I will will say that I do have a preference towards the male narrator of this duo um, and I will say that if you listen to We Hunt the Flames the first book I don't like that audiobook <laughs> I actively think that audiobook is poorly edited but with the second one it is much better and was how I consumed the end of this duology and I do love the male narrator and how he brings Altair and Nasir to life just just phenomenal like Altair is a character in this series who is full of sass, full of just banter and one-liners, and that was just top tier brought to life by that narrator. I also do just generally like when there's a duo, when you do have these multi-point of view epic fantasies where you can kind of delineate that way. It's not necessary, but it does get rid of some of the issue where some voice actors are just better at doing some gender representations than others. Like I've definitely had female narrators who I'm like, oh, okay, I like you when you're talking with these perspectives, but when you are attempting to make a male voice, I don't like that, and vice versa with male narrators. Sometimes I would just rather them not try to deepen their voice or, you know, make their voice higher, like whatever people do, like some people can pull it off, but others can't. So I do like sometimes when you just have a team of people. And yeah, I loved listening to We Free the Stars, end of the duology. It was how I consumed it. I literally was just walking about on my vacation in the mountains listening to it and it was a fantastic time. Number nine is The Sea of Monsters and this is the only way I am now consuming Percy Jackson. So I have been slowly, very slowly reading Percy Jackson and the first time I physically read it I'm like this is good. This is fine. It's exactly the formulaic nature I expect from a middle grade from this time period but I wasn't wowed and I I don't know I wasn't super enjoying my time it was just a good time and then I was like well I need to read this book for a challenge for my bingo board and I was like well I'll just get the audiobook and it was so short and I could listen to it so fast and the voice acting made it so much more fun because I'm just not that creative in my head I don't give people different voices all the time and so all of these larger than life characters got all these voices and it went by way faster than I could have physically read it just because of just the nature of it like it just kept me engaged so yeah I'm now exclusively audiobook listening to the rest of the Percy Jackson series as I've always said probably like one book a year you know just because if I read too many of these formulaic books back to back I will probably not enjoy my time as much I don't know it's currently my plan I assume they were published once a year way back in the day so I'm just pretending like they're getting published once a year for me now. <laughs> Number eight is The Ghost Bride, which you've probably already seen on my list for Monday, so I won't talk about the plot of it too much. Just, you know, the short synopsis is a woman is trying to not become the ghost bride of this man who's passed away in Malaysia in, I believe, the 1800s. And I really liked the narrator for this. Um, this story is told in first person point of view, and I tend to like my audiobooks when it's first person point of view. I I don't know why I think it makes it more conversational or like a podcast it just works really well for my brain and so I, I liked that and especially with first person you can feel like the emotional exasperation a character might be bringing to the page and I think that really came through here especially with the stuff <laughs> she had to go through in this book so really liked the audiobook for that reason I mean I just typically like first person point of views but I won't talk too much about this one since I already talked about it on Monday and this next one is, this is a lot like Percy Jackson, where this is the only way I'm consuming this series, and that is The Wheel of Time. This is Kate Redding, Michael Kramer. It's the duo that also does Sanderson books. Kate Redding is phenomenal. 
I do prefer her narration to Michael Kramer. I have no clue why, but when Kate Redding is talking, I can be much more focused than when Michael Kramer is. I think he also talks slightly faster than Kate Redding. So when I'm already listening at high speeds, it like gets extra fast for him and I have to like readjust, which is more of a me thing. And also in Michael Kramer's defense, I like the female characters in Wheel of Time a bit more than the men and that tends to be who he narrates. So it could also be that. But regardless, I physically read the first four Wheel of Time books. I talk about my whole Wheel of Time experience in a Wheel of Time impressions video and about book four, which is the book most people are like, the world opens up. I love it. I was like, this isn't bad. It's not worse than the rest of the series, but I'm getting fatigued. I cannot keep reading this with my eyes. So book five and on, I've been listening to it and it's great. They, they are really excellent at bringing across the emotion of these characters. Um, so they, they are lifesavers for me. I don't think I would have continued The Wheel of Time without them. This next one is Certain Dark Things by Silvia Moreno-Garcia, and it's my favorite Silvia Moreno-Garcia. I don't know if that's because I listened to the audiobook, and this is the only audiobook I've done of her works, or if it's because it has multiple point of views. But regardless, the narrator was so good. This is an example of a female narrator who I thought did an excellent job of male voices. So she has to balance at, um, oh my god, I always say her name wrong, but I think it's Atul. So there's our main character, Vampire, but there's also um, a male character, Domingo, and then we have a bunch of other like male vampires and like mischievous people. There's a detective, female detective, I think her name was Anna. And so she has a lot of characters to juggle who all get perspectives and point of views. And I thought she did it phenomenally. I always knew who was there, who was talking to me. I loved the voice she gave Domingo, who is my favorite character in that book. Like. This was a book I had extremely low expectations for, mainly because I only usually like Silvia Moreno-Garcia books. They never usually blow my mind. I never get this wonderful connection to the writing that a lot of my friends do. But this narrator and maybe just the source material and how kind of pulpy and of the October time period in which I was reading it in was, was chef's kiss perfect. I had such a great time with it. Number five is also one that I talked about on Monday, but that's Migrations. Again, a female narrator who actually brought to life a lot of male characters and I thought a fantastic way. So Franny, you know, long story short, Franny's following the last turn Migrations for reasons. It's suspicious. We don't know why. That's the plot. I talked about it more on Monday and lots of wrap ups. But part of that is she's on this boat with people. And there's a lot of people from a lot of different backgrounds, lots of accents, all of which I would not have done for myself while physically reading it. Again, my brain is lazy. I wouldn't have given people Australian or Irish or Canadian, like all the accents that are on this boat wouldn't have happened. And this narrator did it so well. I was never confused about who was bantering with who on this ship because it's important. You're with a pretty medium sized crew and they're all important and they're all telling stories and it's a pretty short book. So you don't have a lot of time to get to know people. And I thought the narrator did a great job of giving everyone distinctive voices and kind of affectations in their talking. And obviously all of that was also written down, but I loved immersion reading that book. I think I said on Monday's video, I purposefully spent the last three hours of the book just immersion reading it. I don't typically sit down for longer than an hour at a time to read. But part of it was the narrator just made it so effortless for me to be invested and engaged with this story because this is a beautifully written work. So it also was just nice to hear it. Number four is a series. So this is going to be the Greenbone Saga, although I've only listened to the first two in audiobook. I have Jade Legacy, but I've been physically reading it. And my first time reading the Greenbone Saga, I physically read it. And I loved physically reading. I'm part of why I bought them was because Fonda Lee's writing style works very well in my head. I'm like, ooh, I like this. Um, for, for my reread because of time, but also because I heard the audiobook was really good, I listened to the audiobooks and I was told correctly, the audiobooks are fantastic. Um, and it was really helpful, I think, especially in the second book where I had the hardest time going along with it. I, I do think for me, the second book will probably be the weakest because I am adoring Jade Legacy right now. But he just like, I don't know, he really he made the characters even more vibrant somehow. Like these characters are already like people I could picture and are so great with their characterization, but then giving them these voices, like the way Hilo talks versus Andon versus Shay versus Lon, so good. 
Um, so, I mean, I'm actually waiting to see if my Jade Legacy audio will come through on hold so I can both physically read and listen. And there's just also a nice thing with fantasy books of getting a pronunciation for words you don't know. It's not a big deal, but I noticed when I picked up Jade Legacy to physically read, I was like, oh, I know what these words sound like now. I don't have to do my little trick of like, okay, just this group of words, move on. I don't know what you guys do with fantasy books, but I rarely try to pronounce words that I don't know in my head. I just go, I know what that section of letters means and move on. So listening to the audiobook was also great for that. So if you haven't read the Greenbone Saga and you like audiobooks, I would listen to it because especially since it's more family drama based, it's more politically based, it's not really big into like this brand new world with all of these moving parts. I don't think it's a fantasy audiobook that's like intimidating because I know a lot of times, especially for me as well with fantasy audiobooks, sometimes you need to physically read a while so you can like see the words. But I think since this is so character relationship focused, it's actually a really easy one to jump into. Up next is In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado. So, so good. So this is narrated actually by the author. So she reads her own memoir, which is very fitting. I, I mean, some authors are better audio narrators than others. I really liked it for this. Um, I immersed and read this as well as the same with Migrations. And it was... <laughs> It was amazing. Uh, this book stole my heart. I think I read it in an entire weekend. I just kept sitting down, listening to it, annotating a little bit. Just hearing her tell her own story really added layers to it for me. I was a bit nervous because I didn't like the narrator for her body and other parties. And I don't believe that was her. I think that's a different narrator. I was running into the problem of whenever she spoke as one of the male characters, I was like, I am being removed from the story. I do not like how you voice acted that. But... Her reading her own memoir was, it was amazing. I, I, I feel like I'm saying that a lot, but I, that's why they're all on this list. I really enjoyed these audiobooks. And In the Dream House was just like, it's hard to say you love something that is so close to someone's like most tragic and traumatic moment in their life, you know? But I really related to it. I could see myself of gaining so much from it earlier in my life, but I'm going to hold on to a lot of its messages for later on in my life. Like, you know, you never stop growing. You never stop having to, like, pick yourself back up. You know, you always hope you're done with bad things happening, but but life's a marathon. <laughs> you know, it just keeps happening. So I really loved that one. All right. So this might come as a surprise that number two is not actually number one. But I don't think it will be once you guys hear number one, but I feel like a lot of you would have on your little bingo card of what's Angela going to rank things, put this as number one. And that is Kate Redding, the narrator of Lady Trent. So <laughs> Lady Trent stole my heart this fall. I started in August and I read the last book last month, I think, maybe two months ago. I haven't read the other novel yet, mainly because Kate Redding doesn't narrate it, so I have to physically read it, or I could listen to it, but it kind of looks cool to physically read. Regardless, I physically read the first book, and I liked it well enough. It was a good time, and then I found the audiobooks, and then I only listened to the audiobooks. Um, I got so excited to sit down and crochet. I posted about it on Instagram, which I only post on Instagram when I'm excited. <laughs> I do not have the ability to be consistent on Instagram. I'm always over there. I like sometimes put things on my stories. I like seeing what my other friends are doing. But in terms of me making content, I am not a good bookstagrammer. But I posted about listening to the Lady Trent series because I, I had such a good time. Kate Redding truly brings to life the magnificence that is Lady Trent. That's all I can say. Lady Trent is one of my favorite characters of the year, and a large portion of that is Kate Redding bringing her to life. My brain could not do her justice. She is such a sassy scientist character who had to, like, fight against the patriarchy to get the, you know, recognition she deserved in her field of natural history of dragons. Ugh. So good. So, I mean, I liked physically reading it, too. I think you can go either way. But I feel like the audiobooks are another level because it's also a memoir. She's telling a story. Like, what better reason to listen to an audiobook than when someone is telling you a story? Like, right? <laughs> so now you might be wondering, well, what's Angela's number one? All I do is hear her talk about Lady Trent for the last couple months. And this is actually not a specific book. This is a specific narrator. Now, Kate Redding, I mentioned twice already on this list. But this is someone I have even listened to more than Kate Redding, and that is Robin Miles. 
Specifically, I've listened to the Broken Earth trilogy where she's the narrator. I listened to Cast and I listened to The Shadow King. And although Cast and The Shadow King were not like favorites of the year, I love the Broken Earth trilogy, but that was a reread. Robin Miles, I realized, is just like perfect. <laughs> um, I love her as a narrator. Um, I did not like reading The Shadow King, but I got through it because of Robin Miles. Um, cast is really difficult content, but I got through it because of Robin Miles. And then I did not even think the Broken Earth trilogy could have a better reading experience than reading it myself. I love physically reading Jemison prose. But then I the, the voices that she gave people that I never gave them voices and the, the sass and the banter and the internal banter with the different point of views. I was just like, this is perfection. This is even better somehow. Like how how does the Broken Earth trilogy get even better, right? Well, Robin Miles narrates it. And she was a narrator that I talked about last year. She is probably my favorite audiobook narrator. And I do know that there is a subscriber out there who doesn't love her as much as me, and we can agree to disagree, but that's my number one. I literally will listen to almost anything she narrates. Like, I low-key get sad when she's not an option for a book. <laughs> so, But those are my top 10 audiobook narrators slash books that I have read this year. Let me know any audiobooks that you really liked, any that you think I should be trying out based off my tastes. And if you want to leave an emoji, leave some music notes. I feel like that's fitting. And like if you liked it, subscribe if you want to, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.